Welcome back to another video review. Yes, today we are taking it down a notch. It is not a multimeter we're looking at. No, this is a transistor tester. The M328 to be exact, and it is in the spotlight. Now the M328 did not ship in a box, nor did it come with any instruction. I hate it when they do that. I just hate it. How hard is it to at least throw in a bloody piece of paper? Anyway, I'm venting. Sorry. <gasps> Deep breath, all good. Now the M328 is definitely a colorful beast. I will give it that. Yeah, this is not your lowly black kind of, eh, see it, been there, done that kind of a instrument. No, this is a rather graphic, um, you know, cheery and oh so colorful. A little it's smaller than your typical cell phone. That being said, it is quite small. And if we put it up against the B side, you can see it is definitely a little bit smaller than the B-side, and the B-side is small. Now with the M328, you do have your typical, um, what we're starting to see a lot now with these component testers is this little add-on module. It basically is a uh, socket driven, and you stick it on like that, and that is how you can go ahead and start your testing. Now, unfortunately, if you're testing components, yeah ain't gonna work so this is one of the first immediate drawbacks to this component tester is the fact that yes unlike other ones you do not have any input jacks at all so you will be limited on no, what i will start by using this add-on module honestly oh, i just hate these things i really do I don't like them at all. I mean, it, it has that you know, cheesy feeling, you know, look the way it just sits there, kind of, really, like, uh -huh. it doesn't, you know, exude quality here. But anyway, to start the test, I will utilize this painful little first mod. Look at the meter, as you can see, okay, nothing. That's because we gotta turn it on. Now this will have a 30 second timeout. Now, in terms of specs, no, nothing to get excited about. It goes from 0.01 millihenries to 20 henries, up to a uh, 50 mega ohm on the resistance range, and from 25 picofarad to 100 millifarad. So, yeah, you know, really nothing super special going on here. Now, this is not actually a cheap meter either. It is a approximately 30 bucks Canadian, plus usually shipping. So it's definitely not one of these dime a dozen meters that you see so often. And there you go. And you see this sort of Nintendo-ish kind of Game Boy style, interesting little log on. Now this is a 160 by 128 color LCD screen. I'll just have to lift it up so you can see a little bit better. Now right now we have no components. Now right now we have no components on board, so we're getting that no, unno, or damaged. Nothing unno or damaged well. You know what they're trying to say. Anyway, that will shut down after 30 seconds. As you can see, there is a timeout. So already this is like stressful because I gotta like put something before time's out. But here we also do have a little power button, as you can see at the top left. Um, yeah, so that's kind of mm, interesting. Now, I'll let it time out. What the heck? Let's, let's just let it time out. It's too stressful. I can't take this anymore. Oh, goodness. Thank button. you. And finally, okay, so um, we are looking at 3,253 picofarad. This was rated at 3,100 picofarad, so fairly close. Um, the side is you have both the um, little uh, SMD nodules here that you can plug into, or you can use, actually you can't see, can you? Test leads if you wanted to. So you do have a definite modicum of choices. Turn on the B-side, and you'll see just how quick this is in comparison, and boom, we are there. 3,105 as opposed to 3,250, so definitely the uh, B-side was a little more accurate in this case, and as you can see, a whole lot faster. Next up, we have a small 470 nanofarad capacitor, and okay, we're getting an unknown or damaged. This is, once again, problematic, this little module, nodule, whatever you want to call it. Oh, just hate this thing all right try to, already we will try it again survey says 
435.5 nanofarad and an ESR of 0.26. Once again, a big advantage with the B side because that uh, small capacitor just fits ever so nicely into that little SMD nodule. Hit the power button, boom, bada bing, bada bang, and away you go, 415 nanofarad with a ESR of 0.39. So no comparison in terms of overall uh, performance, what have you, definitely the B side is whipping this guy. I'm gonna butt. lose the uh, module, nodule uh, painfulness, and we're just gonna interface directly onto the unit itself, like so. Now this is a uh, 88 picofarad capacitor. Let's turn on the M328, see what happens. And there you go. So coming up as 92 picofarad. And we will put the same capacitor onto the B side. And 90 picofarad. So pretty close in that respect. In fact, you can still see the display on the M328. Okay, next up will be an LED. Let's test it out. You see it is lighting up that LED and it is showing us 3.45 volts. So let's try the same thing with the B side. I think that's a little bit high actually. Let's see what the B side says. Mm -hmm. 2.93 volts, so that's definitely um, a lot closer. Well, not a lot, it's not a huge difference, but uh, definitely it is closer. And the Winnipex is giving us a forward voltage drop of 2.6 volts to light up that LED. So yeah, that B-Side ESR02 Pro is the winner once again. Last but not least, let's test a transistor with the transistor tester. We just had to, right? So we're looking at an HFE of 207 is the gain. So let us compare that with the B-Side. B-Side is testing and Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. 214 is the HFE. So pretty close to the 207 from the M328. Alrighty, I think that's enough of testing for now. Generally speaking, you see how it works. Um, yeah, not, uh, not a big fan of the interface by any means. Once again, if you do have anything that's bigger or badder, you're gonna be SOL with the 328. Okay, coming up, I'm gonna take this guy apart and let's take a look on the inside. Stay tuned. Take note that there is no standing bale, tilt stand, whatever you wanna call it, on the back of this transistor tester. Oh, let's just call it a component tester already. Nothing, nada. So much for German engineering. German engineering, this is not German engineering. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's the colors. That's Sweden, silly. Now the M328 does take one standard nine volt battery. Taking a look on the inside of the M328, not a whole lot to see. Pretty slim pickings. Really nothing too much stands out other than the oscillator and the main IC, the only IC. It is a AT Mega 328, a single chip microcontroller by AT Mill. And you know that they use these a lot in the Arduino community. It's a 16 megahertz crystal, uh, six analog inputs, I believe. And they are El Cheapo super low cost ICs. So yeah, not too surprising. Other than that, a lot of flux residue and you know, really just a dirty overall sloppy looking board. Look at the LCD uh, ribbon cable here. Yeah, just a mess. So, uh, you know what? Not impressed. Okay, I'm gonna put everything back together and come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the M328 transistor tester. Oh boy, I don't like it. I just do not think this is a really good value for money. No, you could do a lot better with something like the B-Side, which is just a tad more expensive, but definitely 
10 times the performance, a lot quicker and just easier to use. No, you're very limited in terms of your connectivity, functionality, what have you, and the horrible socket style um, interface bites the big one. I'm gonna be giving the Transistor Tester M328 a dismal 1.5. Hope you enjoyed this review, everybody. Till the next time, keep on testing.